Welcome guys to this quick tutorial on how to paint a mortar guard in 20 minutes only. So first of all I primed the miniature with Chaos Black and then I applied the base coat with Wrightburn using the eyebrush. Of course having an eyebrush is not mandatory but since I had to do 20 of them it was quicker. Once the base coat is applied, we're ready to start painting the miniature with the contrast color skeleton horde this way. As you can see, I'm not even using the wet palette for this step, I'm applying the color directly to the mini using a number 2 brush from Winsor & Newton. The most important thing is to accumulate the color in all the recesses to obtain the best result. At this point we're going to apply the contrast color snake bite leather only on the bone parts to make the mini a bit more dynamic and not flat and monotone. Our first step with contrast colors will be with Sigar Brown and we're going to apply it only on feet and ends, just to make them a bit darker. At this point we can start painting the cloth of our mortar guard and we're going to use the contrast color Achelian Green. For this step I'm using a number one brush miniature from Winsor & Newton just to be more precise. To obtain a cool effect once it dries I really recommend to abound with the color so that it can accumulate in the recesses. So now we're ready to proceed with the armor. Our palette will be black from Vallejo, counter blue, rust grey and baharat blue and white for the maximum lights. For this step I'm using the Ultramat from AK, which is that thing in the bottle cap because the thinner this thinner will not only match my colors, but it will uniform them since um, they have a different cons consistencies. The base coat, uh, as you can see, is uh, with black and counter blue. Now we can start setting up the first lights with a mixture of counter blue and rust grey. I'm following the zental light so that all my lights will be on top of any part of, my, of the armor. I keep adding lighter colors to enlighten the mini, don't be afraid if you create any sort of stain because you can always blend it later taking the previous darker mixture.
So let's go with the sword. Our palette will be black, stagnant scale green, soda green and white. Sorry I missed to show you the bottle of the soda green. So apply the base coat with stagnant scale green and once it's dried, keep adding the soda green to enlighten the sword. I'm applying a second layer of stegodon before starting highlighting the piece just to have a um, more saturated base coat. This will help me later with the next layer. Even though you are applying another layer of the base coat, remember to keep it as thin as possible. So start blending the soda green on the upper part of the sword. Keep it very diluted so that once it dries, it will be absorbed and well blended without any more fixing later. Add the white outlines to enhance the contrast. Try to be as precise as possible. I'm using a number one miniature brush from Winston & Newton. Having a sharp tip is great even for this kind of details. Oh, and you want to know my secret for a steady hand? Don't breathe. Think like a sniper who is about to shoot. And now the cool part, the glowing eyes. I'll use the Bealtan Green Wash, Warpstone Glow, and this time the bottle is correct, and Mood Green. As you can see, I'm not using the wet palette, and I'm, I'm going directly from the bottle to the mini, and I'm going over the eyes to create that aura cool effect. I zoomed in so that you can see how I apply the Warpstone Glow and then the Mood Green. As you can see, I'm reducing the area and focusing on the center of the eyes to recreate that glowing effect. The last touch will be painting the poppy with white, just to enhance this effect, and the mini is done. I really hope that you like this tutorial and you find it useful, so please feel free to subscribe and leave a comment below. Cheers!